we are live. This is a conversation about why we choose to embrace the uncomfortable. To embrace things that bring up uncomfortable feelings and why we choose to keep going forward. Today I have an awesome artist that's going to join me. Her name is Kate Lee. She lives in Utah and she creates gorgeous art. Art that really help you reflect upon your relationship with Jesus Christ, who he is to you, what he means to you. So let's see if we can bring her on. Let me see. Here we go. I'm waiting for her. <laughs> ah, there you are! Amazing! <laughs> So happy to have you. Oh, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for being here and just taking some of your Wednesday mm -hmm. to share some thoughts and feelings with us. Mm -hmm. So before we get started, I would love for you to just share a few things about yourself so we can learn more about the fabulous Kate Lee <laughs> and feel like, you know, we're in your art room with you, which is so cool. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. I wish the lighting was better in here. It's kind of like dim. And I tried to get the lamp on me, but <laughs> it's fine. It's but. beautiful soft light. It's wonderful. Um, I'm a floor sitter. Like I'm lit. I love sitting I'm on the floor. floor. I'm possibly the strangest human ever, no. but I, I mean, I watch TV sitting on the floor. I love sitting on the floor. So I'm on the floor. I love I'm it. Happy. <laughs> um, okay. So Kate, if you will tell us where you grew up mm -hmm. and where you live, maybe that's the same. I don't know what your favorite color is. I feel like this is really important because you're an artist and I feel, and why it's your favorite color because I just feel like when we learn about each other's favorite colors, we kind of get a little glimpse into who we are because color is, the world is made of color. <laughs> Clearly God wanted it to be colorful because he gave us so many colors to choose from. And then what you've done today or this last week that has added light to your life. Okay. So it's made, like helped you feel closer to God, helped you feel more like yourself. Um, felt more in tune with your purpose. So where are you from? Like, where did you grow up and where do you live now? Okay. So I, we currently are living in Layton, Utah, Layton. which, um, we love, we love, love, love it here. Um, but I grew up, it was Hunter when I was a kid, but it's called West Valley now, which is not, does not have oh. a great reputation, but, oh. <laughs> but I love growing up there. So that's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, West Valley. And so then, yeah, we moved to Layton. We lived all over, but we moved to Layton like almost what's well, been about seven and a half years that we've lived here. So amazing. Been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Awesome. Favorite, color. favorite color. Hey, tell my us. My favorite color of all colors is purple. My very <gasps> favorite purple. What type of purple? Like a deep purple, a pastel purple? This, can you see this lavender? Purple. Oh, lavender purple. It is gorgeous. Yeah, it's so pretty. I like all the purples, but that that is just such a pretty, it's just a happy color. I just love it. <laughs> Yay! Love okay. Thing I, oh, gosh. I think there's so many things. Like, the silly things are like, I did laundry today, and that felt really good to get that done. <laughs> yes, totally. Like, out of the way. Um, but I think also, just like, um, one of my goals for this year was to reconnect with the scriptures. And so that's Ooh. something that I've been really trying to take time, even just one verse at a time and read the scriptures. And that really gives me personal strength to just keep going forward. So that's something that I've done today. So that's I amazing. That. I love it. <laughs> and I love that, you know, we can, we can feel that light in our life by doing very simple things like getting laundry ticked off. And we can also achieve that light by being in the scriptures or, you know, whatever it is. There's just so many ways for us to um, create space in our mind and heart for God's light to live. Because exactly. he wants us to be lit up with it. It's just, are we doing things to put ourselves in those situations, right? So I love that you got those things done. <laughs> okay. So the purpose of these conversations I've been having is to um, invite guests on to share how choosing to do things that perhaps have brought up uncomfortable feelings, yeah. feelings that we tend to be like, ah, I'm really not, I don't want to feel, right. but possibly humiliation or mm -hmm. possibly disappointed or whatever those feelings are that we don't want to feel. Right. And yet we found the courage to do something uncomfortable, to do something that was maybe unknown. Right. And then it blessed our life. It actually made our life better. It helped us um, maybe learn 
eternal truths about ourselves. It helped us maybe prove some limiting beliefs that they are false, you know, like how it's blessed our life. So my hope is that you could maybe share um, one or two specific situations where you have stepped into the, uh, like you've embraced the uncomfortable and how that has blessed you and how you've done it. Like, and will you do it again? Like, how has it helped you? (laughs) So you want to share a a situation that comes to mind? Yes. Okay. So the first one I thought of um, was going on a mission for me. That was really, really hard. That is something that I never wanted to do. It was not in the plans for me. I had other, I wanted to go to art school. I wanted to get married. I had other plans and um, it was getting closer and closer to my 21st birthday. And I was like, okay, this is like, I have a choice here. I can go or not go, you know? And, and um, I really was determined that I wasn't going to go. And then um, I had somebody say to me that, was my older sister she just said you really need to consider because this whole year people have been saying go on a mission and i've been fighting it and just no and my older sister sent me an email and she just said just think about it you never know what's going to happen just think about it and so i got that email i was living down in st george at the time going to dixie and um which i love dixie by the way but anyway i got that email and i just was like okay fine like fine it was 10 o'clock at night i was like fine i will go and i will think about it you know and i left our apartment and i went over to the saint george temple and i stood outside of it and i was really mad because i had plans and i didn't want to like interrupt <laughs> those plans and so i was angry and so i got outside of my car and i was outside of the the gates of the saint george temple and i i yelled at god and i said you tell me right now if I'm supposed to go or I am not going like I threw such a fit. And it was so clear that I was supposed to go. I was terrified, but I knew, I knew that I had to stop being scared because a lot of the reason why I fought it was because I was safe and I was comfortable and I didn't have to step outside of that comfort zone. I didn't have to like be vulnerable or be stretched. I was safe. And so, um, when the answer came, you need to go on a mission. I was like, Oh my gosh, like I couldn't deny that that's what I needed to do, but I was terrified of it. Terrified. Um, and so like that was the end of December. I get my mission called the middle of January and I'm out in the field in the end of May. But you know, this whole time before I left, it was, it was an a battle, like an an inner battle. Should I go? It would be really easy just to say, no, I'm not going to do it, you know? Um, But I kept coming back to, but I'm going to miss out on an opportunity if I don't go, you know? So I kept pushing myself forward to just go. Anyway, so I get out in the mission field and I was just, I was terrified. I didn't know hardly anything. You know, I was just a lot of doubts and a lot of things that I, I just didn't really believe in myself that I could do this, Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, thankfully I had an amazing trainer. Thankfully she was incredible and she taught me a lot and she gave me a lot of confidence and, um, she taught me how to have a vision of what I wanted for my mission. You know, like, what do you want to accomplish at the end of your mission? And Mm -hmm. that was really the, the jumping point for me. I, I understood that I had to have a vision in order for me to, um, move forward as a missionary. And so I took that lesson and I went on with the rest of my mission, left her, went and did more mission stuff. And, and I, it was really hard and scary, but I grew a lot because of it. And I look back in that time and I think I kind of was asleep for 21 years of my life. And then I like woke up and I became like a human. I don't know how to say that, but I like woke up, you know, <laughs> And I was just like, oh my gosh, well, I wasted so many years of my life. And I just, I had direction or not again, I had direction for the first time in my life. I like understood who I was as an individual. I, you know, I just had, I had goals that I wanted. I knew where I wanted my life to go. And it just it was a really cool um, eye opening experience. I get, like it was, I really literally woke up out of this 21 year sleeping, you know, it was really <sighs> amazing I think you touched on so many great things how um before you were comfortable Mm -hmm. and uh I think sometimes even though like in our comfortable place it's maybe not 
awesome or we're not growing because right. it's predictable that makes us feel safe because we right. know what the pain associated with staying here looks like mm -hmm. and while we might not love it you know we'd prefer to deal with what we think we can control right, right. and i think when there's something big, like a mission, that's, a, that's 18 months of your life, right. living in different places with people you've never met before that you <laughs> might not enjoy. Like, right. There's a lot of big things that I'm sure just any person's like, whoa, that could be insane, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and I think of the scripture, I don't even know where it is, somewhere in the Book of Mormon where it talks about like, this is for your experience. I give you this for your experience, yes. right? And how are we supposed to grow and have experiences if we stay here right like the amount of experiences we can stay in our safe like that exist in our safe zone are okay. pretty limited yeah. and you know we probably outgrow them like in our elementary years if we choose not to progress right. beyond the space right. and so um you know no wonder if we feel like stagnant or we maybe aren't feeling revelation or connection with god if we right. stay there is when you it sounds like when you chose to make that leap even though you weren't thrilled about it um then all these new experiences happened and perhaps your need for heavenly father became far greater because suddenly like you don't know what to do because you don't have you don't, you're outside of what you know so right. you're like, ah! and yeah. that gives you the idea well no i guess gives you the um, it compels you to be with god compels yeah. you oh, to be absolutely. guided by him especially in that situation, because you are, I mean, you, you're away from familiarity, you're away from everything. And you do have to relearn like how, like I, I, I had had an apartment before I left. I had lived on my own before I left, but it was a whole new environment. And I had to truly, truly a hundred percent rely on God because he was the one teaching me, you know, and, and it taught me about my abilities and what I actually was capable of where before, where I stayed in my comfort zone, it was like these false walls, you know, that like they preach of like safety and growth and, you know, protection or whatever, but really it, it those walls keep you in your, one place. Like they keep you stationary. And like you said, you're not, those, those um, experiences are so limited. You know, so that's, it's scary to step outside of those walls, but it's so good. So good too. So anyway. What are some of the things, Kate, that um, you learned because you chose to do that, like embrace the uncomfortable feelings associated with going on a mission? What are some lessons you learned that you would not have learned staying in your comfort zone? Oh gosh. Um, how much time do we have? Cause like there's a whole huge list of things that I've learned from that, you know, like, um, well, I, we're going to go for about like 30 minutes. So <laughs> I'll just talk, but we can cover lots of things <laughs> in that you choose what you feel like compelled to share. If you just want to share one, that's fine. Um, right. yeah. Like one, like what is something that you learned because of that, that now you have? Um, I just think that I learned to, push forward through the difficult times because before I wasn't really good at um, pushing forward. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, absolutely. To get like that resilience. Yeah. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. something I really just kind of um, before, like, uh, gosh, I hope this makes sense. Like I had an apartment before my mission. I moved out after high school, had my apartment and, and when things would get hard or like challenging or whatever, I, um, I would tend to cry a lot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And um, I would, I would just hide in my apartment, but going on this mission really taught me how to, even if things get difficult, you have to get up, you have to get out, you have to do, you have to be, you can't just cry and hide on the, and lay on the couch. And, and sometimes that's okay. But I was always doing that. I wasn't pushing myself into my mission that taught me to push myself through um, the challenges. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, that's brilliant. And I'm sure you have used that, um, the experience and lessons you've learned from that time and time again, you have two boys that yes. are now like teenagers. I'm sure you've had many opportunities <laughs> to be like resilient and yes. keep going on when it probably did not feel like that's what you wanted to do. <laughs> um, okay. So <laughs> a question for you is something more recent in your life right now um, is there something in your life right now that you are feeling compelled to do or you are trying to do that is uncomfortable? 
as Kate Lee today. Yes. Okay. So I hope it's okay that I talk about my art because that is something. Please do. Yes. I absolutely feel compelled to, not in a bad way. Like, I just feel like it's something that, um, I, okay. I hope this comes out right. Everybody, I hope it comes out right. It's going to um, come out right. I just feel very, um, drawn to it. Like that is just something I need to do. Just like with the mission, I just feel like Heavenly Father's like draw and paint and share and give this way. Um, so that's something, but that is something that is really difficult for me and it's gotten easier uh, with time, but that was something that it was just so difficult for me to open up and be vulnerable and raw like that, to share something that was so important and um, just so close to my heart to, to open that up and give that to the world yeah. to, to either like or not like that was really hard for me because it was so important to me. Um, um, yeah. So that's something, but I do, I, now it's just, I put it out there and if people don't like it, it's, it's, I'm okay with it more now versus yeah. when I first started. But anyway, Oh, that is awesome. What are some um, what are some things that stop you? Like if we take this art situation, you're feeling really compelled to share these beautiful works of art that you've created that mean so much to you. And I'm assuming you really hope that it's going to bring joy or add light to someone's life or help them cl cl draw closer to their heavenly father. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. evoke some sort of connection with God. Yeah. Um, what are some thoughts that you have that stop you from doing that? Oh my Sometimes. gosh. Um, every day, every day. Like I just, you guys, just this week, even, um, actually it's been more, it's been more like a month that I've just been fighting. Um, just that doubt of I'm not enough. Like I'm not good enough for the people that follow me on my Instagram. I'm not good enough for, um, I'm just not talented enough to produce these Christ centered paintings because you look at all these amazing artists that are out there and I'm like constantly comparing well I'm not as good as that well I, I didn't get as many likes as that person did. And, and that's just it gets me the comparing and the doubt um it, it kills me and then and then on top of that like am I going to be able to write something in my um what what is it called your caption am I going to be able to oh, write yeah. something that makes sense. First of all, I, I'm not great. I was never great at school. I was never great at English. Like none of that stuff came easy for me. And so I'm always like worried or, or uh, it's just the doubt. Can I do it? And the, and the comparison to those around me, you know, um, especially I'm so, so good and so bad at comparing myself to people, um, that other Deseret book authors or artists. I'm terrible at comparing myself to them. I just always feel like I'm not enough. Anyway, so it is, I tell myself, like, just, uh, I don't, I don't know if I should say what I tell myself is not positive though. And I have to fight that constantly. Yeah. I really appreciate you with um, sharing that because I, I know for me, those type of thoughts come right up for whatever yeah. the I'm doing. And right. I know that that's really common. And I think it's important that we acknowledge that it happens to all of us yeah. um, because like if like if we're here on earth it meant we chose god right right, <laughs> to come right. so already we're kind of ahead of satan because we yeah. chose <laughs> we're like i'm going with god and he right. gives us a body and he sends us to earth and have these experiences and so already we already have an enemy and that's right. satan and oh, he yeah. is going to whittle his way into our mind and create stories because if he can get us stuck in any sort of thought or feeling, right. then he can go and do something else. Like mm -hmm. he's dampened our lie. He's like, it's fine. They're not shining no more. I'm good. Like she'll be stuck there for at least a week. Right. right. And he'll go do his own thing. <laughs> and so I know that there's more of like for people to hear you that what, look at your art and are so inspired by it. And to know that like you are, you are doing a battle too. And you're inviting God to, fight your battles. I think President Nelson said, Russell M. Nelson said in, I think it was in the God Prevail talk that he gave last conference, maybe, or maybe two conferences, I don't remember. But yeah. he says like, God will fight your battles and your children's battles and your children's children's battles. Yes. And so when we invite him in, like we're fighting it, but he's fighting it with us, right? And so I love 
that our friends can know that when they have those thoughts, like, oh, I'm among a really awesome group of humans that are striving to do God's work, that are striving to shine their light, to do the things that God is compelling them to do. And right. so thank you for sharing that because even though those thoughts aren't positive and they're like icky, we see ourselves in your thoughts and we're like, oh my goodness. I compare yeah. myself to whether like maybe someone's comparing, it's maybe not their artwork. Maybe it's their bodies. Maybe oh, it's their yeah. business. Maybe yeah. it's their family, how their family looks or how good their kids are. Right. right. I mean, I think anyone could like put in here what they compare themselves. Oh. It often doesn't take as long to be like, Oh, I do this. And I compare yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I guess um, we can, we can look at the fact that God created so much diversity mm-hmm. that he really wants us to embrace how we're different, yeah. how physically look different. We think different. Our creations are different. Our perspectives are different. Our families look different. Cause if he wanted us all to be the same, he would have made he us, don't the make us the same. Like he's right. God, he can right. do that. <laughs> like, well, if he wants something to happen. Yeah. Think about the people in your life that are different from you and what you've learned from them. Like I, I think of my, um, just my friends now that I, I, love to listen to them because we are different but they have such good insight and they do things and I'm like oh I never would have thought it to do it that way you know and I you draw strength from differences and you draw like yeah. courage and and you you anyway you can be molded by those differences and and we have to remember that versus like ah, I'm not as good as them or I'm not as cute as them or you know whatever it is it's just yeah yeah we can't give into that defeat I love right. I love that you know that like we can't do this. You know what I mean? Even though we do, when we can remind ourselves like, whoa, this is happening. What tools do you have to remind yourself that you're going into that comparison loop, that you're going into that um, kind of unhealthy thought pattern? Do you have uh, signs or signals that like a red flag, like, whoa, Kate, whoa, where are you going? That <laughs> helps you like bring yourself back. Maybe I should do a live of that when I'm walking around my house and everybody's gone during the day so you guys can see what actually goes on. Because <laughs> I do, like, I, first of all, I talk out loud to myself. Nobody's home. Oh, me too. Yes. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so I do, I have to talk to myself. Like, just today, I, I posted this one today, and it was everything that I had been feeling. Um, it's just, the painting is this girl, and it's called The Beloved Daughters of God, and it's part of a series. And this girl is just throwing her arms back, and she's just, like, free of, like, everything that's been holding her back, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm getting ready to post this, and I, it just instantly, I, I know what I want to say, but instantly the doubt, like, Satan is just like, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you're not smart enough. You don't know big words. You know, you're so stupid. Nobody likes your art. You don't have that many followers or whatever it is. And it like, it brings me down. And so then I have to say out loud, leave me alone, you know, and then I'll talk, okay, why is this good? And why are you doing this? And guess what, Kate, it's okay. And if people don't like it, you know, I just talk to myself and it's probably, I look like a psycho if you're like <laughs> looking inside of my house while I'm walking around because I'm carrying the laundry baskets. I'm like, you're doing a good job. You're a good person, you know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> But that really helps to like hear it, not just think it, but to hear it, you know. Um, but yes. other things that I love to do, and it's so therapeutic for me, is to find a quiet place. And I, I have it here, but like I get a journal and I write down um, what I'm feeling because then if I can see it, I'm so visual with things. If I can see it, then I can process it, you know, mm-hmm. and then I can. Instead of like the skewed things that Satan wants us to believe, I've written it down and I can actually, like I said, process it and put down, like push aside the the lies and actually see truth in that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I always have my go-to scriptures that are just good and they help remind me of, you know, just who I am and, and that God's there and that I'm not, I'm not what Satan wants me to believe I am, you know? So those are things that I... Love and then good music. You just put on good music and you know dance around. The house. Also adding to my psycho behavior in the house. Yeah. <laughs> just dancing around. I love it. <laughs> I love that. I think the whole journal, writing it down or saying it out loud, helps mm-hmm. it live outside of you. Because yes. I think when it's in here, it it starts to make us feel like we're trapped in a jail or something. Yeah. And and then the more it spirals and compounds upon itself like the more ridiculous it becomes because (laughs) you know it like 
you're like thinking the most like such construed lies that are just ridiculous but because they're in our head and it's spiraled gradually we still kind of believe it whereas if we can write it down as you say you see truth and it's like whoa yeah that is not true like <laughs> it's just not and yeah. getting it out is just so powerful so if any of our friends are experiencing that i think saying out loud like be like me and kate and just talk to yourself it's okay even in the car even in the grocery store nobody knows we have all these masks on oh it's nobody knows that you're talking to yourself like i do it all exactly. the time like, That's good. I, you're doing good just keep walking and nobody knows <laughs> i love it i find myself singing in the grocery store because people can't tell where it's coming from and it's right. so freeing. I remember hearing this story about, I heard it at church and it was a story of a lady and she's pushing her little girl through the grocery store and she's like, Jennifer, it's going to be okay. You can do it, Jennifer. And she's just like doing a shopping, telling Jennifer it's okay. And she gets the checkout and the old lady's like, oh, you are so lovely to your daughter, encouraging her. And the lady goes, oh, I was encouraging myself. <laughs> And I was like, yes! <laughs> so I don't know. You're all doing that with your masks on at the store. I hope you're all like, you get this. You can do this. <laughs> you can buy on, guys. that chocolate and that soda. That's okay. <laughs> Just in, like, if we're going to look on the bright side, the COVID has got the mouth shut, covered. You can give yourself affirmations wherever you are. <laughs> Yeah. And if they think you're Brilliant. crazy, whatever. Yeah. It's a, it'll give them a good story to share. Exactly. Right? I love that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think that's so fantastic. And I love that you are giving yourself advice when you're in those moments. And I'm such a believer that we are exactly where we need to be and we have the answers we need just to take one step forward. Yes. So, and you know, the answer might be, I need to read this book and this book is going to help me. Um, the answer might be, I need to call up a friend and she might help me, but right. I'm a big believer that like we have the answers for what we need to take our next step. And right. so as you're empowering yourself, you are giving yourself advice because you've had these life experiences, you've gained wisdom throughout your life that you have a lot to offer yourself. And I think sometimes, um, we're offering it to other people, which is so glorious, so Christ-like. Right. We can also offer it to ourselves. Yeah, we can <laughs> offer it to ourselves. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, you know, can we really love other people if we don't love ourselves? Right. Right? Um, right. You know, we can advise everyone and give them all the stuff, but are we listening yeah. to our own advice? Exactly. And I think that's something we it, we have to fight hard to remember. And this is something that I did a lot. And, and talking myself out of the negativity is relatively new to me you know um but we have to remember we can't like i used to just say you know i am such a bad person and nobody likes me and i would just have that on repeat and i would just re like there would be no fighting for the the good or the light or the positive i would just allow that negativity to just fester in my head you know and it was it i mean i don't know who knows the story of who's heard the story of with my experience with my state president, um, but he learning to, well, therapist, but also with my state president, I, I have learned to um, talk to myself positively. And the one thing that's, that really sticks with me that my state president taught me was that he, he said, um, I want you to imagine your brain right now and it's like a, a metal rod and right now it's like bent, right? And your thinking is, um, not clear. So you've got this bent rod, right? And he says, you're retraining your, um, your muscle memory in your head to go back straight so that you can see truth and you can see who you really are. And I think about that all the time. And so when I am beating myself down with these words, when I'm allowing the, the adversary to just hound me with negativity and, you know, and I catch myself allowing that to come in, I have to remember that, okay, you know, I'm retraining my muscle memory. My, I don't think that my, this sounds so silly, but my brain rod <laughs> is not straight yet. <laughs> my brain rod is not straight yet, but it, but it's getting straighter. But I do think about that. I'm like, okay, how am I going to like fix this brain rod and make it straight so that I can allow that positivity to, to replace the negativity? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Like, 
I think we have to remember in those moments when we are feeling so defeated that we cannot, we cannot allow that to dictate what we do and how we feel about ourselves. We have to fight for the good because if we don't fight for that good, we're never like we're we're never gonna know who we are and we're never gonna feel that light. So it's so so important that we fight for that. So that's my like hugest advice <laughs> when you find yourself that. in that moment of defeat talk nice to yourself and be good to yourself because then you can like you said let that light let god you know let god in but but you're right we are equipped with all the things that we need we just have to allow ourselves to um to do that yeah so. to be open to it yes i love i love the image of the brain rod right. love it <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> I'm going to think of that. Remember. <laughs> I, I think I think the fact that it, you called it a brain rod makes it even more impressionable upon my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that you are using, you said earlier how like your super visual, so visual things help you yes. and how like with the brain rod, that is a visual. And right. so for our friends on here, like figure out what makes sense to you. Maybe you're someone that like my husband is very, um, uh, like very like linear minded. <laughs> so okay. wow, like imagery is amazing with me because I'm like all over the place and <laughs> everything's imagery to me. And like, it's all about like internal for him. It's very like linear. And so he yes. will need to find things that are linear. So kind of know what your strengths are friends and play with your strengths. <laughs> you know? exactly. yeah. God has given us enough, like, awesome tools, enough analogies, enough things that we can find at least one thing that's going to kind of highlight our tendency, the way that we think, the way that we embrace our world and what kind of lights us up. And um, I think a great thing is like to ask lots of people. I mean, you reached out to your therapist and your state president and something clicked, something clicked enough that you are still remembering it now years from then. Right. Which is right. powerful. Um, and I love that you talked about, like, we need to remember. Mm -hmm. You know, we have these moments, whether it's, like, a tool that makes sense, like, whoa, this is what I need. <laughs> or whether it's um, a spiritual moment where we know that we are God's, that we know, or, like, we are his, like, he, we are his children. Exactly. Um, we know that, like, um, we are enough or whatever it is. When we have those moments, we, we need to remember them mm -hmm. so that when opposition comes which is going to come like the scriptures tell us <laughs> all right. in all things so let's stop being surprised when it gets hard and be like oh this is part of the deal like we're going to get hard right now and have things in our in our like toolbox ready for us to use right because yes. it is going to get hard and i think i think when i was younger i really wanted to like conquer the hard things in my life and then be done with them. Like turn my back Forever. and never have like to deal never. with them. And then I, yeah. And I would like be this like exalted Jessica. I'm like, yeah, I'm just fine. <laughs> and I've just come to learn that that is just not what being on earth is about. Right. Rather, I find that I have to have both. I just don't have to stay there anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's I'm like going to get stuck. I'm going yeah. to have those negative thoughts. Um, but I don't need to stay there anymore. And there was a time that it, it stole years of my life. Yes. It stole, um, you know, memories and just opportunities that I didn't take because I was so stuck right. in yeah. um, icky thoughts, right? Yeah. But now, like, I can tell the difference that I kind of stop myself faster and I spend more time trying to advance <laughs> in some yeah. way. Yeah. Right? <laughs> How has like your experience with um feeling the opposition how has it helped you have more empathy with other people oh gosh that is i mean it just does be, because you know you know how you felt in in whatever the challenges that you're facing you know how you felt felt and so when you see somebody else going through a similar thing or, or maybe sometimes the same thing you for me it's just like oh i get that load and it hurts i remember how painful or how heavy it was and and I do I just want to whoever it is want to reach out and sometimes sometimes it's like well first let me finish this thought I want to just reach out and and do what I can to like give a, a hand or lift that load for them or 
I don't know if that makes sense, but I do. I just, it's almost like I wish I could go up and hug them, even though that would be really weird. <laughs> or they'd probably be like, oh my gosh, what is this girl doing? But I would love to just like, oh, it's going to be okay. Like, you're going to make it. Um, but sometimes when I'm at like, really at the grocery store, because that's right now the only time I really go and spend extended time, you know, somewhere, but um, go to the grocery store. And I, I do, I wonder what is that person going through? So, or what is that person going through? What load is that person carrying? You know, and it's mm. like, I try to, sometimes I'm a grump and I just, you know, leave the mask on and just like go through and get my stuff, you know, but there are times, you know, I try, I do try really hard to just be like, um, say hi, and they can't see you smile anymore. So I like try and smile with my eyes bigger, you know, like, you know? <laughs> so, I'm, like, trying to, like, cause you, I don't know what people are going through, but it's just like, I want to, what if they had a really bad day and, and I, what if I'm grumpy to them and I just make it that much worse, you know, I like, just trying to like reach out to them through my big weird smile in my eyes or, or I do say hi sometimes, <laughs> but I just, I hope that answered your question, but yeah, I think that the things that I've gone through in my life, I'm really grateful for, even though they've been really difficult, um, because they have helped me to love people deeper. And that's just really been such a blessing because, because like I said, I'm not perfect. I am a grump sometimes and I, I have road rage and <laughs> all of those things, but it does, it has been a blessing um, because it does help me to see people the way that Christ and Heavenly Father hopefully see them. I hopefully I see them the way that they see them. So. Yeah. I love that so much. That's amazing. And I think it's just, I love that you're like, I'm not perfect. I'm a grump sometimes because totally. we're all just human. We're all just <laughs> trying. Right? right. And you know, while we sometimes have really great days where we get all the things done, we want to get done and we find the, the light in our day and we find like the positive spin and we're like, yeah. And then right. sometimes we don't get out of bed and it's oh, just okay. like, a, mm, right. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as we embrace opportunities that bring up uncomfortable feelings, mm -hmm. um, to know that you're not alone in it, we're all faced with things that are uncomfortable. Maybe different situations make me uncomfortable than what right. would make you uncomfortable and wake our friend. And that's okay. That's okay right. that your friend, if she was faced with the exact same situation would be like, I love doing art. I am not afraid. Right. And they'd be right. fine. That's great. Um, right. But that's not your story and your story is yours and you own it. And it's the path in which you are going to learn and grow the most. Right. Um, and I just, I hope that our friends can, feel encouraged to remind themselves of who they are when they have those thoughts to know that they're not alone and that there are some tools they can use. Like they can right. totally journal. Like you said, they can talk to themselves. They can put on some music and just shift the energy. Sometimes we don't have the mental capacity to talk ourselves through it, but we can put on some right. Michael Jackson and do the moonwalk. And maybe that's what we need, right? <laughs> maybe that's just what we need. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I love it. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, if there's someone on here that is in a similar situation to you feeling kind of stuck with that comparison and with some really ugly, unhealthy thoughts, mm -hmm. um, they're listening to you and they're like feeling inspired, but they just think that I just know I can't do this. Right. What do you say to them? I think, um, oh my goodness, first a hug for sure. So find somebody to hug you because that's something that's so, that that um, physical contact is so important. Um, but I think that something that I would tell my young women a lot is to, instead of focusing on what you are not, focus on what you are. So like, mm. even if it's just one thing that you like, like let's say it's your hair and you really like your hair you know, then, then that's good thing about you and you really like it. Right. And then, and then move from there and say, I really like how tall I am, or I really like the shoes I wear or, and then go from there. I really like that. I'm nice to people. I really like that. I have a good smile. You know what I mean? Like mm. find one thing that's good about you and focus on that. So focus on what you are instead of what you are not. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That, 
that is what I would say because that is what I had to do. Focus on what I liked and then build on that. And it just gets bigger and bigger and it gets easier and easier. And like I said, you have to fight for it. You have to fight for it because it's not like, oh, I got it. And it's not, it never comes back. Like the, the hard times always, it, it yeah. will be that you have to fight for it, but, but you also have to allow yourself to fight for it as well. Cause Ooh, well, that's powerful. Worth it. So. Cause yeah. sometimes we don't allow ourselves, like we hold ourselves yeah. back because we don't, we don't value ourselves enough. Um, right. So we're the one preventing it from happening. That's super right. powerful. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, thank you so much for your time, you. for your, your spirit, for your ideas. Um, I just think the more we can share with each other to encourage each other to move forward. I, I just ask our friends, imagine if you, Kate, hadn't decided to act on that compelling to do art. Right. I mean, so many people have been touched by your art because it has opened them up to their savior in ways that they haven't been open before. You've been able right. to um, speak to their situation that maybe they felt wasn't seen or it wasn't understood and because of something you created they felt seen and that's an amazing result of choosing to embrace something really uncomfortable that you fought <laughs> but you you fought against it and then you fought for it right yeah. and because of that like you've grown tremendously but a lot of other people have benefited and i think we forget that um when we embrace the uncomfortable, we're blessing ourselves, but there's a ripple effect. And, you know, sometimes we don't get to see what the ripple effect is and that's okay right. too, yeah. but it doesn't mean there isn't one right. because there is always a ripple effect. It always is. Yeah. Yep. And everything that we do, it just, yeah, it is. And it's like, if you feel like just, sorry, I know you want to go, we need to go, but no, like, no, I love it. I have all the time. I love all these things. Bring it. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the time people feel like, um, especially I'm in Relief Society now and I hear this often, I just don't feel like my life makes a difference. And I feel like uh. that, that breaks my heart when I hear that because mm. you are a light to somebody. Everybody is a light to somebody. Maybe we know it, maybe we don't, but you are a light to somebody. And just, you know, again, just be positive about who you are because it's when you're negative about who you are, you are allowing Satan, the adversary or whatever to win and to run you over and to like beat you down. But when you are like positive and, and you're kind to yourself, you really are blocking Satan. You're kind of stomping on his head, which is what we should be doing anyway. You know, you're just kind of like, not today, Satan, you know, and, and it really does block his influence. And it's just, anyway, you really, I love that. Somebody and we have that power, right? Yeah. That power I mean, is Oz. I mean, um, the light of Christ is more powerful than Satan. If we've made covenants, that's some mega power we have access to. Um, we have that power. Are we fighting to use the power? Or are we fighting with that power, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was just introduced to the idea, the, the term today, instead of CTR, choose the right, um, CTS, check the source. Oh, so oh, like the thoughts... Yes. Check the source of your thoughts. Right. Are your thoughts coming from God? Because if they're not, get rid of them. Like, they're right. not going to serve you. They are not going to serve you. Right. And I really liked that idea, like, check the source. Um, you know, and if that's like, if you're feeling something, um, maybe you feel discouraged, um, right? Because something's happening. You feel discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, then thoughts are going to come along with that feeling, right? And the thoughts might be like, oh, well, you probably should give up because that was a failure right. and took a lot of effort. <laughs> um, like, even if God won, like, had a different plan for you, I don't know where in, anywhere in the scriptures where he's like, and thou shalt give up because thou failed. Like, right. I don't right. see that in the scriptures. <laughs> he's often like, try again. Right. Have more faith in me. Faith right. is dead without works. Mm -hmm. Right? Asking you shall receive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, knock on the door, I will open. <laughs> and so that thought the source check the source like it doesn't come from god because he doesn't speak to us that way he doesn't yeah. belittle us he doesn't tell us to give up he might redirect us right. with a new idea right but he doesn't tell us to give up right and so checking the source of those thoughts i think can be really um 
a valuable tool for us in moving forward and in having the courage to just put the hand up to thoughts and be like, no, yeah. or to, a, to an energy. Like sometimes like we just like feel that anger because something's happened and we're like, ah, and we just want to like <laughs> exactly. vent and be mad. But yeah. like when we entertain it, we tend to spiral and end up creating stories and thoughts that didn't even exist because right. the source was not from God. Right. Cause he doesn't spiral us to a place of being out of control. Right. He centers us and helps us feel like we have control. Um, so I think checking the source can be super helpful to us. I love um, that. Isn't I'm that cool? Right yeah. <laughs> I, it's Sarah Grace. She's on here. I, I know, read it I from Sarah Grace live. Oh, she so taught cool. me that. Check the source. Cute. I've been thinking about that all today. Um, Kate, what uh where like what are you working on right now that you can share with our friends and where can they find you um share the things okay so i don't currently have any paintings here with me because they're all with desert book i just sent them all to, to desert book headquarters so that they can do what they need to do so so yes it's so fun but okay we'll tell you what's coming out the end of march please do end of march <laughs> listen up friends this is important so exciting you guys i'm so excited okay so you guys know the painting, um, Peace in Christ, and then mm -hmm. that's the one where Christ is holding the girl, and then um, one that is new last year, um, in 2020, was called, it's called Nurse the Word, and that's the one where the lady is kneeling, and she has the, the plant. She's holding the plant oh, out. Yes. Okay. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay. So these two are being made into figurines. <gasps> and, no way. Yes. I'm so excited. And we'll be out. I'm... I'm as of now, it's out the end of March. If it changes, I'll let you guys know. But it's very, I'm so excited. I cannot wait for this to come out. It's so cool. So you can find like all of my stuff at Desert Book, all of my stuff. I am exclusively with Desert Book, so you won't find it anywhere else. Um, and if you want to kind of see what's out and what's coming out, you can just go to my Instagram page, which is Kate Lee Art. Um, but it's Kate underscore Lee underscore Art. So that's where you can find me. <laughs> and yeah. Is there I'm, another Kate Lee art out there? I'm sure there is, but. <laughs> you should be like, we do art. This is so cool. We have the same name. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy Joel's wife is Kate Lee. So which I think you like invite cool. them. Yeah. You could like invite them to come into Christ. Cause you're like, right. oh, my art's about Christ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I love it. So that's all at the end of March. You said those things are coming. Yes. It's um, as of today, I know that, but then it might change. So if it changes, I'll let everybody know, but so fantastic. So. And can people like purchase stuff on Deseret book online as well? If they're not yeah. close to one. Yes. If you go to uh, my Instagram page, there's a link in my bio that takes you just right to my stuff, like all of my stuff that's available. And so, yeah, you can shop online. You can go to the stores if you're close to a store and, um, I do think that there is more in the store versus what's online, but there's a lot of stuff online too. So yeah, amazing. And I love that if if people are visual learners, our visual reminders um, yeah. are is such an amazing way to remind us of who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if if there is art that you feel connected to that just like lights a fire within you, I just think it's so smart to go and get a piece and put it somewhere in your life because it's just that visual reminder mm -hmm. of whatever the lesson or the message you received behind it, just every time it reminds you. And that can be such a powerful um, force to send you forward instead of yeah. staying stuck. Yeah. So I, I have, I have all these things everywhere. I have like, I'm a quote person and quotes just I like take me forward <laughs> and it makes me so happy. I, I like can't go anywhere without not remembering. I'm like, Oh yes. Remember who you are, Jess. You can do this. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> So Thank fun. you so, so much for yeah. your testimony, for your willingness to embrace the uncomfortable. And thank you for gifting us with thank so you. much beautiful art. But beyond the art, there's such rich testimony with your art. Um, it comes through the images to me just tend to just pierce my heart. And then I love, you said earlier that you don't feel like you're good at writing captions. I always just feel like you're just chatting right to me. Uh, so <laughs> when Satan wants to tell you a lie, be like, no, that's Jessica what told me I'm speaking to her. You are wrong. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. do tomorrow. I'll be like, Jessica, <laughs> you're, gonna tell you're wrong. You're wrong. Jessica said. <laughs> Jessica said. 
<laughs> um, anyway, thank you so much. Have a beautiful evening and I wish you the best. And thank you for sharing all of your goodness. You are so good. It was so fun. Okay, thank you all. Get out of Amazing. here. Thank you so much. <laughs> so fun. All right, we'll see you. Bye. <laughs>